Hello everyone, on today's command tutorial we're going to be taking a look at waypoint missiles. Uh, basically in command you have a couple different missiles that you can actually assign waypoints to follow on their way to their target. Now these are typically used with cruise missiles, especially land attack variety. They are also used with anti-ship missiles depending on what generation. Now one thing I want to establish before I get too too carried away here is not every aircraft or ship that can launch this type of missile can actually take advantage of the features of this particular kind of missile. Just because of the limitations of the fire control. So anyway, let's uh, talk about why we would need something like this. So normally, if I were to take my Ticonderoga and order it to attack, you know, this Grisha, which is kind of hanging out somewhere over here, I'll go ahead and shut off God mode so you can see it, it would basically launch pretty much straight down. A lot of times the game is clever and will actually leg the missiles a little tiny bit. You've actually seen this behavior if you've ever launched a big batch of uh, tomahawks at the same time, just to make it a little bit more difficult for the engaging ship to basically to shoot those missiles down. Now, a word about that, as you're probably aware, most ships have basically fire control centers on them that are responsible for basically aiming all the weapons on that particular side of the ship. When you look down at like mounts and sensors and things like that, a lot of times you will get things that basically say, you know, target indicator and stuff along those lines that basically, here we go, weapon director, this is the one I was looking for, that enable you to aim all the weapons of a ship. Most ships have one in the front and one in the back. Now, one of the strategies you can use is to basically overwhelm this by firing all your weapons or you can try to hit it in an area where it cannot cover itself with one of those towers. Now basically, as you know, when these ships are attacked inside this game, typically they want to beam the target to try to unveil as many of these particular weapon systems as they possibly can at one time. So the trick here is, if you were to fire a missile right down the middle, try to fire one off the nose as well to limit its ability to engage it like that. It's a spectacular strategy and it works really well. So anyway, how do we do this? Well, pretty straightforward actually. Grab the unit you want to attack with, go ahead and press Shift F1, or if you prefer, you can click Manual Engage Target, click on the target, then simply make sure you select the attacking unit, select the selectable unit, come down here, and this is the weapon we're going to be attacking with. I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click with 2. Now I'm going to click on the weapon, and then select the new plot course option. Now, this little dashed line represents the current course the missile is going to be taking without any interference. If I click on the map, I establish the first waypoint that I want this missile to travel in order to get to its target. Now, because we want to try to trick this target into beaming us, and then we hit it on the nose and on the tail, we need to make sure that these missiles are launched first because they have a longer distance to travel. So when you set up waypoints, you always want to click the first waypoint and then work your way to the last. Remember, you can always reset it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm guessing it's probably somewhere in the middle of that square. Click right here and now you can see that this missile, actually a pair of missiles, is going to go here and then take a right and fly to the target. When you're happy, simply tap the escape key. Now here is a common mistake. If I double click this again, all I'm going to do is add more missiles to this salvo. You have to wait until it's fired in order to go ahead and launch more of them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that very briefly. Keep in mind it only takes about a second to launch a harpoon missile. And perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and reattack, select the skunk, select the weapon again. Notice it grabbed the exact same waypoints as from before. We don't want that. So I'm going to click on clear course. Then I'm going to select the weapon that I'm allocated, click on plot course, and simply do the exact same thing like this. So now some of my missiles are going to come this way. Some of my missiles are going to come this way, forcing a choice on this particular ship. I'm going to go ahead and tap escape again. I'm satisfied with that. Go ahead and hit spacebar to launch. Good. So now I'm going to wait just a few seconds, and then I'm going to launch my missiles that are designed to basically go right down the center. Give it just a moment. By the way, you can do some hilarious things with this technology, such as turn around a corner and come from the other side if you're so inclined. Just a little bit more. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to launch a conventional attack. Watch out, though, because it will remember from before. I'm going to clear the course, plat course. I'm going to go right down the center. Perfect. Tap escape. Close it. And now our missiles are on the way. Yep, they're allocated. Oh, that must... Oh, I forgot that I had reloaded him earlier. So he's going to take a few minutes before he'll be able to fire again, I'm sure. Let's go ahead and double check here. Do, do, do. Uh, mark 141. Ah, bummer. 
These guys are being sneaky. Eh, it's okay. Four missiles should be enough to scare him pretty good. So if I were to click on one of these missiles now, you'll notice that it actually shows this. It really feels like you should be able to click this and drag it. But remember, this missile is basically operating on INS slash GPS. So these two missiles are going to go out, and then they're going to pinch the target in between itself, forcing it to have a really fun time predicting what target it wants to engage. So I didn't time this well, because you can actually see that these missiles have not le uh, legged yet, which means, of course, these two missiles will be easily shot down long before the other missile is able to get into range. Of course, now that this missile is coming here and he's wasting his surface terror missiles on that guy who's now beaming him, means that they're going to have a much easier time actually engaging. So this is one of the classic times where I'm not too annoyed. Of course, knowing that particular Grisha is going to have no difficulty at all shooting down these harpoons, uh, I think it's going to get him. Nope. Ah, got him with the Sea Whiz. So hopefully that makes sense as far as the best way to use that for that. Obviously, this wouldn't have worked so, so well, as you could probably say. So now, what if you're using a land attack missile? Well, the system is exactly the same, but this time you can take advantage of the mapping features of Command. So I'm actually going to click View. I'm going to switch over to the Relief layer. Oh, look at how nice that looks. I'm going to go ahead and pause right, hold on just a second, here. Anybody who's played DCS recognizes the Georgia map, and everybody who's played DCS down here near Batumi probably knows the river that goes through this. Now, we happen to know that this airfield is being protected by an SA-3. SA-3s, if you've all clicked on them before, you'll notice have an OODA loop of about 30 seconds, which means anything that's within this range that is detected within 30 seconds can be engaged. That also means it takes a minimum of 30 seconds to engage, which means if we want to fire a cruise missile at it, firing it straight at the target will give this plenty of time to engage that target so what we're going to do is instead is launch the cruise missile down this valley and basically pop up at the last second and dump right in the sa3 before it even has a chance to spin its radar around and engage so let's try that out go to myself shift f1 just like before click on the target of interest we have two tomahawks actually i'm sorry these are agm 86s i'm going to grab two of those click on it press plot course check it out so now what I need to do is keep in mind the range of this particular weapon. So I'm going to go actually turn on all ranges real quickly, make it a little bit easier. So you can see that this is the engagement range of the SA-3. So there's a couple fun ways I could do this. I could come this way, or I could come this way. Personally, I'd rather kind of come this way. Ideally, you'd want to come under his radar horizon to make this an even more effective attack. So I'm going to call my first waypoint here. I'm going to send my second waypoint. They will never hit the ground, by the way. Don't worry about it. I'm going to set my next waypoint here. And I'm going to put my last waypoint right here. I like this point. Because remember, it travels about 9 nautical miles per minute, so which means 4.5 nautical miles before it can engage the target. Just estimating in my head real quickly. Ah, if we popped up from here, we might be able to get it in time. So I'm going to tap the escape key to confirm. Go ahead and close the screen. Let it rip. And off they go. Go ahead and spin it back the other way real quickly. And now I might as well attack the rest of the airfield while I'm being such a nice guy. Keep in mind, if I fired ahead of the Grisha, the Grisha would probably slap them right out of the sky also. So in this case, this is definitely a superior way to do this. So now one thing I could do here is, let's say I wanted to attack all these tarmacs with my six of these. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and grab the ammo pad too, just for fun. I can actually tell it to launch one weapon at each one of these particular targets just by clicking like that, which is a great, great method. And now, of course, I can come in here. I can grab these, and I can individually plot their courses as well. So, for example, I can make it come down the same little surprise valley like that. I could grab this one over here. I could grab this. I can make it come um, again. We'll just we'll take advantage of this nice little valley. Probably scare the crap out of the neighbors kind of a thing. We go over here. We could plot the course for this one. I'll oh, we'll take a slightly different path this time. We're going to go down the valley, but then we're going to cut back across. And then we're going to scoot, scoot over the top of the mountain there. Go ahead and grab the next one. We'll do something a little different this time. We'll kind of make it come out this way. Scoot, scoot through here. Grab the valley. Come on and drop in. Let's go ahead and grab this other one. Again, we're basically protecting our missiles here because uh, they're not going to be able to be engaged quickly. So we'll do one that's a little more direct this time. Go ahead and do something like that. And let's see here. We have the last one. Oh, what should we do with this one? Um, I don't want to shoot it right across the middle, but we'll do something kind of like that. Of course, by the way, you can do silly things like this. 
and it works perfectly well. As a matter of fact, it's really fun to do this to cause missiles to fire and completely miss. It works great. So I'm going to unpause. He's going to go ahead and fire each one of his missiles independently. And thank you for your service. So now these cruise missiles are basically going to fall out of the sky, and they're going to start doing these really, really cool little assigned paths that we've assigned. So watch this. Now the Grisha, I think this is a little close to the Grisha. As a matter of fact, I would not be surprised if he tries to take a pot shot at that. But then again, it's his waste. Keep in mind this SA-3 here right now is sitting there tracking this missile going, I've almost got a beat on him. I've almost got a beat on him. Now, if he's stupid, which he is, he's going to try to fire, and that cruise missile will get into cover of the mountains. Oh, what might make... Ha 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 ha! So now that SA-3 has just wasted ammunition. What a spectacular method to go ahead and uh, waste time and ammunition. So anyway, these guys are struggling a little bit with the mountain ranges here. Oh, did you see it? So watch this. He's coming around the corner. Now, this guy is my favorite because the SA-3 is probably staring at him right now going, what is that? This one, meanwhile, is uh, swinging around the corner. Yep, these are my two anti-SA-3s. Hopefully, the SA-3 sees this one first, but if we're lucky, he'll get behind this mountain just in time. Good. So this missile is flying up right as this one's going to dip behind the mountain. Again, there's a lot of philosophy and design here that we can uh, take advantage of. That SA-3 is never going to be able to hit. Yep, I was right. Good. Good. Excellent. Man, that worked well. Check it out. Meanwhile, as it's being annoyed at this one, the ones that are actually going to attack the SA-3 are now whipping around the corners. They've just popped over the top, and now the SA-3, ah, he might actually get one. He might get one. Nope, not today. Minimum range. Oh, we got one. So now his crew is rapidly changing targets as these guys come dropping out of the sky. Look at that. Went right by him. Oh, this might not actually work. I am very impressed with how crap fast that crew can work. Oh, no. And here comes the other two, which of course we've run out of SA. We've run out of missiles at this point. <laughs> I still managed to get two hits. So at least you have the idea. Keep in mind, air launch cruise missiles are not exactly stealthy targets. They're basically, you know, Cessna 172s with jet engines, and they are very, very easy to hit. But at least you can see the concept and understand exactly how that operates. So that's basically all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and take a look real quickly. It looks like we did a little bit of damage here. And I'll go ahead and look at losses and expenditures real fast. You can see uh, what we fired off here. We got an ammo pad, and they went through. Wow, I did not realize how many of those they fired. That's actually pretty impressive. All right, hopefully uh, you found this video interesting. If you have any questions, uh, just sort of toss them in the comments below. Otherwise, enjoy.